piece in this lot. Secret Voyages to the New World by Goddard Thompson. You see, secrets. We're going to look into secrets today. We're mostly going to be dealing with Africa, Africa, and Frigida. We're going to start off with the confusion of land masses and place names, you know, time periods and stuff like that, how things change and stay the same. We'll start with America and end with it. So in this so-called Roman map of Florida, Microbius 440, we're gonna see a lot of maps from Macrobius allegedly. But we're gonna start off, you say, in this map, you got Frigida, right? Then we got Europa, a Europa. Then we got Africa, or Africa. Then we got Perusta. Peru, and uh, I wear was ocean, Okeani, and you got Perusta, and then we got Temperara, Antipodum, Nobis Incognita, which means we don't know. <laughs> this means temperate. And this means uh, below something or behind something. Perusta means heartlands. Uh, Frigida means coal lands. <laughs> Africa also means heartlands. Perusta will be hotter lands <laughs> in that sense. So again, at the bottom, we got Frigida. So. Looking at a 1440 Macrobius Macrobius view of the world. So Perusta confers term Peruro. And of course we get Peru from that. And uh, we see per completely rural, rural burn. So burn to the soon. That's pe rural. Pe rusta, which means, what means something like heartlands or something like that. Pe rusta. Let's get into some of this text. Orthodox historians have never liked Amerigo Vespucci to begin with. As a lower echelon warehouse manager, he never had the kind of credential that Columbus had as a luminary of important events. Thus, the so-called serious scholars have typically regarded him as being, and we all know, the source of the name for America. And not only to me or a lot, a lot of other scholars so called scholars or whatever um, don't use the fact that he been a warehouse manager I didn't even know he been there but to say to discredit that from him I mean we don't even got evidence that he actually existed like a lot of historical, historical characters but more than him being a warehouse manager the name Amerigo and Vespucci got his origin of itself that goes back to Moorish origins 
making it moot if it comes from his name and not a scope to make it more. It will be an omission of it being Morris even more saying that it comes from a medical with spooky. All right, being the Cecil, the most of Cecil and all that already I ruled those areas before the guy Miracle Vespucci even existed. So that name was of Moorish origin. So that's beyond the point. Let's continue. So out that the Romans had named the northern region of the Antipodes, which again means the uh coming from another region to another as paria so they use another term again paria according to my research as uh, a term that got a, the same meaning as africa and it's climate it's climatical in nature just dealing with a climate a certain type of so and this was a reference in the woodcutters who harvested harvested Brazil wood from the forests of Central America and Brazil. So it would seem that both Amerigo and Columbus referred to the places where they landed as being legendary paria of the Romans. The notion that Vespucci attempted to perpetrate a fraud was simply the wild imagination of a paranoid Columbus fan. Most of the 19th century critics of Vespucci was content to dismiss the first of his voyages in 14. 97. But what they don't really get is the fact that Columbus and America were just scholarly calling stuff what it was technically <laughs> at that time. And we move the definitions of a lot of these terms over time, which we confuse ourselves. That don't mean the people at those times was actually confused with what he been doing. We accused them of being confused a lot of the time. Thereby giving the credit for the first landfall of their hero, Columbus. However, Emerson wanted to besmirch Vespucci as a total, total liar, thereby removing him entirely as a possible threat to the honor of St. Hood for Columbus. My next video will show how Vespucci and Columbus is irrelevant. <laughs> I'll show you. I might name like 50 different people who've been over here from Europe back and forth with names and dates way before the 1400s <laughs> that nobody want to talk about. So Emerson employed that work anyway. The College of Cardinals decided that the Spanish Genoese hero simply couldn't be allowed into a heavenly hall of fame due to his participation in rape, adultery, and genocide. Regardless of that setback, there was still enough political monumentum, momentum <laughs> to immortalize the admiral with the national holiday. So the church tried, it, tried not to, he, he claimed the church tried not to even recognize uh, the Columbus again because the story been been dealing with rape, adultery, and genocide, which it is, but it's still stuck. But it goes to show us how they making these people, they you know these people don't really ain't really got these figure these figures shouldn't be bigger than what it is because they they're made. Um, most historians now say that Mary goes sail at least three voyages. The scanty documentation regarding regarding the first voyage to Costa Rica and Gulf of Mexico in 1497 was due primarily to secretive nature of the expedition for the King of Spain. Another consideration was that Vespucci was so stunned by the new lands that he encountered so far, encountered so far from Asia that he needed time and several more voyages in order to get a responsible, accurate picture of what was really out there. <laughs> He wasn't about to declare the existence of a new world without having a firm scientific argument for something that was so new. Which I believe more technically that he knew it wasn't new. 
the idea of making it new wasn't his idea. It was the idea of certain people Columbus been dealing with, not Vince Bucci. And they tried to mix the two, but at that time, America Vince Bucci never um, make the claim because the claim wasn't a real claim. We're going to look at it in the next video. The claims really made for this land and what names they even use. <laughs> it wasn't America. It was America that was the spell off in that form yet. So, meanwhile, Columbus had died and with him died the notion that China was located directly west of Europe. Even so, most medieval church geographers still clung on to the default notion that there were only three continents in common accordance with scripture. So, that's the reason why Africa or Libya is part of Asia and America and what we call Africa today in that aspect because the church only recognized them three <laughs> Asia, Europe and Africa or Libya because that's biblical but even in biblical you gotta look at it like they're talking about the whole world in their minds we're gonna look at that later so they explain the coastline of a new continent looming on the horizon as an incredible long peninsula sticking out towards the east from a land bridge reaching all the way back to Siberia. Marco Polo maps showing the streets of Aninan east of Siberia and the derivative map of Sebastian Monster in 1544 clearly showed that the new continents were separated from Asia in the Arctic Sea east of Siberia. Considering the severity of church opposition to the name America, which is kind of not true, but that's the version of Morocco. <laughs> that honored and evolved heretic, the survival of the name on European maps was at best a tenuous affair. Many map makers choose instead to use such titles as Mondus Novus, New World, Brazil, or India Noa, New India. However, everything changed the publication of with the publication of Gerhard Mercator's map in 1541. Mercator, uh, uh, Mercator was also a heretic who was arrested and tortured because of his Protestant religious belief. So they didn't want to break up the old map into this new map. We got up seven, the seven continents instead of just the three lands and with the church dealing with the best optic of Morocco then claiming the rulers of Africa that's what the church been doing so we got Africa proper Africa proper being that in this map we got Africa just being Carthage in the area of Tunis. A little bit on this map, a little bit uh, east of it, stayed. <laughs> and you see the rest of the continent is just Libya. <laughs> so sometimes they call it the land of the Catulians. which they call certain barbarous, which just means foreign, people who was the first inhabitants of Africa. Spell just like this. We're gonna see why later. So we got Mar Apricum, the Sea of Africa. We got the Tyre Sea, the Sea of Tyre. Ty, Tyrone, names like that showing and we got the Sardinia. See? <laughs> but 
Ptolemy in his fourth book of geography divided Africa in 12 regions or provinces, namely Mauritania, Tigitana, Mauritania, Caesariensis, Numidia, Africa Propia, Kyrenaikia, and Africa Propia, us saying that this is truly Africa, where the rest got its own name. We call it the kingdoms of Africa. <laughs> That's why they say they divided Africa into 12 kingdoms. So we got Mamarica and Libya Propia and I give to Superior and I give to Inferior, Libya Interior, Ethiopia Sub, I give to and Ethiopia Interior. So that's the whole continent in these times the ancient division of Africa by Ptolemy and the comparison of the ancient with the modern names. And that's before most of the names we see today on maps of Africa, the Africa broke it down like this. And we can see the people they might have had different names than that and use these letters and they but they using these letters now. <laughs> so we go into the origins of that. We ain't gotta get into nothing that we don't got no we can't prove. It's like over here with the Indian things when they say names means something that some Indian created a thousand years ago but ain't no written record so we can't verify what they say. We gotta disbelieve it. Go far for that. So we see on this map, we see Mauritania is North Africa, and Africa Propia is in the spot, Libya Propia, just like we just finished reading, right? And Libya Interior, that's most of Africa at this time, we see Gay Tuli, right there. See the Atlantis Mountains and everything. It's called Libya right now. So <coughs> it's follow along. And the geographical geographical jumble regarding the Niger. Now watch what they say about the Niger. As identical with the Nile, etc. Leo was only following the cause he thought Leo the African. He had picked up the he had picked up Italy. Thus as usual, proving a poor comparative geographer by the admiral descriptive one. Thus he follows Pliny in making the Negris identical with the Nile and forming the border between Africa and Ethiopia on the frontier of Gaetulia and in his and in book nine he expressed Especially admits that he considers a river called the Gir, the same as Ptolemy's Niger, which might or might not be the river now called by that name. But Cooley is entirely mistaken in affirming that Leo by the Nile means Senegal. <laughs> so now and Senegal are Negal. All those terms we will see. He possibly be confused with some of the rivers in the section of Africa but with the names of the kingdoms on the banks and, and it's certain that it was the Niger he was describing as far as his own knowledge went and so far as the information of the Arab traders enabled him to write at second hand so basically saying that the word now in Niger is basically the same word we're dealing with a black river and again, the tribes from around these black rivers erroneously be called black people. Just like people from Caucasian mountains <laughs> called Caucasians. It's both erroneous. Cause just because I from a mountain car I grew up from a mountain car um blue mountain. <laughs> My village living as Blue Mountain, where you become the blue people over time. Does that make it right? No, 
that's erroneous. We just the villagers from around the Blue Mountain. And if we look at even geography in America, let's do that real quick. Got no time. Let's go here. Uh, maps. Maps. Okay, let's look at North America. Let's put in colors. Let's put in black. And you'll see where uh, okay turn this way we got black river black river township black mountain in south carolina so we got the black river falls in wisconsin we got black creek in wisconsin black hawk county so what that's what i tell us let's see if we got a knee a niger river over here or a negro river i think we do right there the black river go through michigan go I, I believe it go all the way through the south the black river so you got a negro river and the tribes in historical like even in new york historical accents south carolina also they use the those ritually things like they captured <laughs> the they'll go back and look at written in Latin from Portuguese and Spanish chroniclers that say stuff like they captured Negroes from the Negro River. That just means Black River. They translate that. That can be any one of these river. And that story could be happening really in our times in America. Right? Without us even knowing. We thinking it's something to happen on the continent what we call Africa because we only see the Niger right there. Niger is Latin for black. So in that book, when they translate it, they're just saying black river. They not they don't have to specifically be talking about that particular river. It's tons of black rivers on this planet. Our rivers called black rivers because the water looks black. And Moors live round rivers so they're going to be around any black river or any river for that matter so <laughs> south america we see the negro river so we got the niger the negro and in north america where we speak english it's in english it's black and black river south america where they speak spanish it's rio negro africa where in Roman territory of Africa, the name Africa is Roman, so the rivers and the name place name should match. So you got Niger, which all the same word. Nigeria, the country of the blacks. Literally meant mean. And there's other words in this thing, but that's just an example of what we just read. How confusing even in these scholars in these times being confused from earlier times from their period when they go through books from their earlier times they don't they get confused because the language. I can see how Nile or now can mean black linguistically so let's continue it is related of this offering of this offering that he made he made war against Libya and it and took it and that is his took his grandchildren when they inhabited called it from his name Africa we talk about a biblical character Oprin fighting in Biblical Libya and giving it his name of Africa. So, this is another theory of the term of the origin. And indeed, Alexander Polyhistor give his um, attesting to what I hear say who speak thus Cleo, Cleolimus the prophet, who was also called Malchus, 
who wrote the history of the Jews in agreement with the history of Moses, their legislator, relates that there were many sons born by, to Abraham by Keturah. Nay, he names the three of them, Afer and Serum, like Serum now, <laughs> and Japhron, Japhron, that from Serum was the land of Assyria, denominated, and that from other two, Afer and Japhron, the country of Aphirica <laughs> took its name. So now we got a whole nother aspect of the word, right? So here we see Afer, as this is the name Afer, Ika, and Ika, we're going to see him later. It's very important why we look at these things because we're dealing with the language of the actual person who writing it. So in this aspect is Latin <laughs> with the Afirica. It's a form of Latin and Greek mixed. So because these men were auxiliaries to Hercules when or Hercules when he fought against Libya and Antibus. And that Hercules married Aphra's daughter, and of her he begat his son Theodorus, and that Sophron was his son, from whom that barbarous people called so fuckings <laughs> were de denominated. So it's going into a lot of prehistory, the before Troy and Rome and Greece and all this. We got into what came out of that from these Moors, these Phoenicians right here, so called Moors and Jews. <laughs> And that's from this website right here. This we won't read the rest. He gets into a lot more about the term Africa. I just wanted to show this part right here. Aferica. Afer. Has its meanings. Because as we can see in the term has to be split up today. He still got the ICA right. It's, it still exists as that. In a way. So let's look. In this book. Called. In Darkest. Africa, see, and books like this you can find, but you will find most of the copies that they written with Africa spell like how wild that e right there, just wild the e, <laughs> and you got Africa right, because they, they when they republish these books, they think they correct in bad English and bad grammar, but what they're doing is they reconstructing history because now you're getting a different meaning but this author knew exactly what he was spelling <laughs> he might have been if they weren't correct the guy they could attain that F to a PH it would have been more correct instead of taking the E up but they'll do that if you look for this book it'll have most of the copies but in dark as Africa <laughs> instead of Ferica taking that that just the author's ignorance so Another example of that is the word California, right? So, and this talking about the bulls and paper bulls and stuff dealing with America, the church wrote it like this. Let me see if I can find it for you. Let's see, missionaries, the Catholics. I'm going to show you an example of how nothing is set in stone like we think. Like something is, something and not one thing. If someone more spell like this, he ain't wrong about it. He more right than you because you changed it. This one existed before the version where we spelled it with the F. It was spelled like this. It's like Caliph, how we spell in English version of Caliph. We spell it just like that with the PH. But since California got the F instead of the PH, today, then by more saying that actually literally means the land of the Caliph, 
they're gonna use things like well cali is spelled with a ph and not an f and <laughs> they're gonna use that against you if you don't, if you ignorant of the fact that that's irrelevant this f and ph is always interchangeable in linguistics that's why the most easiest rule for linguistics to learn that it's time and times and distance change words don't literally change the word just change the form of it so let me see California also again in this document um, this is a good document to read dealing with the Philippines Islands by talking about California and he's talking about parts of America because they're dealing with names in a way different from the way we deal with today it's not set in stone as we think in our minds today so you know you got california again spelled like that in this document see you got maraca canas the maracanas that they didn't name them and stuff like that it's a, it's a lot of evidence to this what we say so you always gotta go with what they claim to be official. So Wikipedia or Wiktionary is English, American English official sources for authority on what they say stuff means. So let's go to it. I'll say a scholastic source. The term is derived from a Punic or Berber term <laughs> for the country in which the city of Cartridge was located, which we saw earlier in the maps where we see Africa Propia is where Cartridge, the city of Cartridge, located in Africa Propia on those maps. So they write so far there. So it is possibly derived from an Etonian, which again that means a name that come from the people and not the other way around not the fact that they call the, the people Moors because the word more means dark skin so Mauritania became land of the dark skin though the people were Moors and the fact that they were dark skin the definition became that <laughs> not the other way around So these people, what they perhaps they call afar or das, akin to the biblical Hebrew apar, which is das, and alternately from a Berber language ifri, which is cave. So alternately, so one or the other, they don't know. So denoting cave dwellers, cave meaning pueblos, <laughs> not like cave. Like we think Flintstone cave. We talking about real elaborate palaces built in canyons like the Grand Canyon would be the same. Are these some walls of the Atlas Mountains? So Flavius Jefusipus again derived the ethanol from the name of Abraham's guy from Emperor. So back to that same thing we learned from the website. They come back to that theory themselves. The name perhaps related to the tribe of the Ephron. So it's another again. The possibility of the origin of the term Africa. Or Afri, because the Ika, we're going to get into that right now, I think. <laughs> so, from Africa, the region, modern day Tunis. So, off the top, they tell you it's a Latin word. <laughs> and Afro, feminine Afro, neuter Afroom, got its own term. From Africa, that's where they derive it. <laughs> And here it is conjugated 
Can you see masculine vocative afri? And the genitive masculine is also afri. The genitive neuter is afri. That would make sense because they're using the neuter for the land. And because they're using the feminine, the, the feminine version of land, but they're using the neuter version. I mean, the, they're using the masculine version for the afri. So, basically, that's how they would do it. They would use the masculine for the group of people name, and they would use the name of the land or land, terra. It's a feminine word, so okay. So Afri again, a Carthaginian. <laughs> so they're using the it basically the land of the Carthaginians would be totally what Africa literally sp spelled out in English translate to according to this page right here. Like we take off the suffix. That means the land of, we just got Afri, which they say, basically, a Carthaginian. If we put on the land of, which is I-C-A, we will get the land of the Afri. So, again, they show you even more. Was I just wanted to explain it? <laughs> so, the Africus and Africus. Um with the epileptic of terra which means the african land so africa the land of the african so the adjective africus come from the name of the afri the tribal people of the area of near carthage the carthaginian by addition of the suffix equals right so that's important keep that in mind because a lot of people don't get their roots and suffixes is, is important and the suffix equals is the suffix we see to this day used all the time eka and masculine i mean equals is masculine but land masses we use eka feminine a mare eka so be safe to say again even for that word like we're doing with africa we can take off the eka because that's just the land of and deal with a mare we're gonna do that at the end so Right here we got the Greek version, Afrique, which is a different suffix, slightly different. And here we go. The Northwest Africa, the territories of Carthage, that's Africa. And they got the different examples in the Latin, in the actual Latin text that show they were talking about specific things using those terms. So it's like friggy deuce, like we saw earlier. Friggy deuce means I am cold. You deal with cold chili. It's like we deal with perusta, aprica. These things got certain meanings. So you see that map showing friggy da. That's a mean that that name of those places is cold lands. Technically, it just means that that's what it is, cold lands. But you don't call yourself, you don't be like, you from Frigida. Like you do Africa, people turn that to a place name and a name for themselves. But you're talking about hot lands. If you don't explain that, you're talking about the Afri tribe, those Carthaginians name, you're talking about hot lands. You only could be talking about one. Or, or the third option is you talk about the modern political aspect of what that is today. Being an inhabitant of that land, and most of the people y'all ain't inhabitants of these of that land, so that out the window. So Frigida, that's another map from Morbi Moribus, <laughs> Moribus, whatever his name is. And on this one, you got Frigida, you got Italia. On this one, and that's what he represents. We got Perusta again showing you that he just dealing with climate zones, 
he's not putting these names on it to say that's the name of that place <laughs> but that's how we confuse we start calling it that because we saw it on maps the ignorant became came later and called it those things and this one same person got refusio and habitabilis got a refuge or inhabit uninhabitable for frigida now you got inhabitable when you come down a little bit and you got tropical then you got also refuge when you get down to the door right there but you got habitable then you got again inhabitable refuge and when we see refugio doesn't really mean it possibly a forest or uh, lands that a lot of mountains and stuff like that that they can't see to the end they would put refusio <laughs> on this one you got Europa and you put Africa spell like we see today on this one finally <laughs> then you put Ethiopia under that you just leave that part blank <laughs> So it just fall along. I can't make out what he got with his side, but I'm pretty sure he's dealing with Jerusalem at this time. And probably Miro in Egypt. So I'll kind of show on this one. He got Frigida, basically coal lands. <laughs> Hispania. And and when people the, when the races come through and they hold up they go back to Africa signs it's total ignorance to for one we shouldn't even think that's racist if we stuck in the mindset of that we as Africans <laughs> based off any other people understanding of what that is when we get you know every man get the right to claim whatever he want right God says whoa the fact that our complexion people think they got the right to assume that we're Africans or pre-Africans or whatever <laughs> when they don't got a linguistic understanding of the word meaning sunny or hot places then you can go back with their ignorance and say well how about you go back to Frigida cold places which ain't nobody want to live in Frigida because it's in uninhabitable <laughs> But since the ignorance want to, you know, you go ignorance. We want to show people how ignorant it is when they say go back to Africa, Heartland, then send them back to Frigida. Because that's all they're doing. They're being ignorant. So Hispania on this one, I can make out a lot of these. <laughs> but we got Sicula, Sicily, we got Asia, Asia, we got Egypt, Egypt. Got to look like Rooster in inhabitable area right there. And I can't make a lot of this. So basically you're talking about climates, not place names. I say for up here, they're dealing with place names. I believe. Or it could still be dealing with climate or terms for all we know. Like they do say, climate it means black land. That would be geographical in nature. Like Amazonia. Amazonia, a term like Paria. Those are not people, those are names of like forests. You wouldn't call yourself forest. <laughs> the nation of forests because you live in a forest so in this one we got can't even get them to stay straight <laughs> got Cadiz and this one which is very interesting you got Europa then you got Frigida again the north Rooster the 
go Asia. Back to the three. The three work the three land and map. And it's like the first one we see. Even though in that book he claiming this way he to beat Florida. This part. Showing that the Americas is on the side of this map. <laughs> we see Babo on this map. <laughs> and I look like, I don't know what I say, but Al Kian, Al Quran. <laughs> see Carta. We see Italia. Which is not surprising because we're in probably from Rome, which is in Italy. <laughs> you see Gallia now showing up, France, Hispania, Spain showing up. We still see Fregida. We still see Africa and Perusta. So, I mean, and according to this map maker, Peru would be Africa <laughs> and North Africa would be Africa and the rest of it would be Peru to this map maker until you get down to South Africa then you get into Tipperada before you get down to Antarctica so I don't see people calling it the Peruvian diaspora they call it the African that's why they're dealing with Africa Well, you know, let's deal with the oldest. This is a very old understanding. Okay. Yeah, let me look at this one. We got Fila. Philadelphia. <laughs> All the way up there. Up in Frigida in Europe. Now you see, it's called Ethiopia, Perusta now. Ethiopia, not a term meaning something about burning. <laughs> so you see Ethiopia on the side, right? What's going on? Again, Peru. <laughs> we see what I get is new. So as we get later on in history, time go by, people still put Africa on these maps and Ethiopia on these maps but now they got more understanding of what the people names we got the cities and the kingdoms which is the real terms of who you was you taking terms that generalizing these things and making it personal so look like I say Musamel Regno Musamel they Kenioa, which we know is the Ghana's kings. And you got Libya interior. You got Barbaria, that's North Africa. Which B and M is um B and M is uh interchangeable, so Mamarica. You got the Red Sea and Arabia and all that. Everything getting more clear as time get on. But when we see this map, we don't even see Africa at all. What we see is Asia, Europe, <laughs> particularly. And hence, why you see texts where he's talking about Asiatics, they're talking about Africans. Period. So. <laughs> Based off maps like this, then we got the Atlanteans right there. <laughs> so basically, according to the idea of this map maker, everybody who been from right there on to wherever going in that direction been Atlanteans to them. That's what these things mean when you see maps that look like it ain't done. It is done, but people ain't been broken up as much as we broken up today. Everybody. They from the in their mind, everybody behind this mountain <laughs> right here been Atlantes, Atlanteans, 
anybody from when you pass that mountain to them are the pillars of Hercules. Everybody down here, this men fights to them are Libyans, or Nasamonians, and Asiatics. And all these people are able to be Indians. Stuff like that, they look at like that. Europeans. You see, the Celts. And by the day, all that is Britain and France and Normandy stuff. And this one, they put Africa on it. Now you got Africa, which is Carthage again. They're giving it the name to the whole continent based off Hanno, the navigator being the first to circumvent the land to show how much it was or whatever. Give it its name. And Asia became this side now. And this became Africa. As time go on and more map makers come and give different understandings so this one Libya you can see Tarus <laughs> instead of India Tarus meaning the bow and this one again breaking down like the first one we saw Europe Libya in Asia. So, as we see throughout, we call, we say things and don't know what we say half the time. <laughs> we chalk it up to what common people believe that what it is. Motherfucker, it's Africa. We know everybody know Africa. Over there, goddamn, we know. <laughs> we gotta get take the go. But at the end of the day, people will use these things against you. So you're really careful. And plus, you shouldn't want to be ignorant of nothing. I won't know exactly what I'm saying, not what I could be saying. I won't know exactly what I'm saying from all points. Ain't nobody can come around like me and point out y'all ignorance. <laughs> so, why do you scream go back to Africa? Why do you scream go back to in, um, Europe? Which is Fregida, as we see. Right? As we see. So, at the end of the day, you saying go back to the heartlands, and one saying go back to coal lands. You can find heartlands or coal lines on this continent. <laughs> so basically, you could, you might be in Africa. What kind of temperature? What kind of temperature? What what climate you are uh, area in? Huh? What is in New York? What is that? Is, is that Frigida? What is Florida? Is that Africa? You know, bunch of ignorance. So. As well as you know, we deal with truth. We deal with intelligence. We deal with knowledge. Don't hide from it. And don't just dismiss it because we're too lazy to go through these type of things. We don't do that. We get to a point of the matter which will make it illegal and lawful. If it ever become an issue in any courts on this planet, or, right, in front of any nation, the truth only gonna be whatever the hell the origin of that word is. That's gonna be the truth that day, not what we are our pains is, or our feelings. So that ends this. And next one, I got a few paragraphs you gotta read about pre fourteen ninety two, starting from. 1200 and some change. <laughs> They're talking about the Americas 
and Europe relations. Dealing with the term Africa still in play. And it will be something to see. We'll see.